wale wanajua mahali wanachimba gold where do you get gold kwa mchanga chini ni mahali unachimba few few feet kwani hamjawahi ona mahali unachimba gold unachimba na jembe hivi alafu unatoa gold unaweza chukua jembe hii ya kulima wengi wewe nao kwa shamba hivi utoe gold you must prepare with the tools na unaingia kwa mashimo hivi 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 na kuna machines na wataalam wa people who will tell you how it is for wanaweza hasa hapa na waende wapate gold huko kitengela ile au huko ndani lakini wameanza na hapa wako chini ya mchanga na i'm trying to tell you when we talk about wealth is not about what we are just shouting hey. i've never seen a man who said mimi is gold niko nazo 10 kg i've picked on the streets For you to have gold you must dig and you are not digging any shallowly you are digging deep now okay dig deeper in the process unapata mawe utatumia baruti kupasua hiyo mawe utoe yote nje ifungue njia unaenda kwa gold they don't stop digging for gold kwa sababu walipita kwalifika kwa mawe wanasema in fact hiyo kwa mawe ukipasua unapatanga some some signs kwamba na wanasema anga mani kuna gold lazima kuwa na mawe before i want i want to teach you something today in your gold lakini unapata kuna kamawe block wana 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 kuna venye wanaita wa kijaluo don't know how to explain in english are you following it's like a, a layer wanasema hiyo layer ukichoka hapo whoever is coming after you will just do few feet amepata gold so you are told ukiona mawe fulani ukifika is usually hard na ukipasua upenetrate umalize you have gold man who dig gold oh i wish i had also a screen like they keep saying may god put it here i would have shown you a picture ya wenye wanachimba gold wenye wanakuanga wachafu wanavaa vitu zingine zinakaa anyhow wanaingia kwa mashimo na torch chakula everything they don't look important but when they come out from that pit na waoge the money they have does not look like the way they are dressing i even want to say when we talk about wealth we are talking about every wealth of a nation is measured by the gold bar in the store of the nation and that's why england is one of the, the richest countries in the world because they are keeping the biggest gold in terms of tonnage i even want to say okay we know because of so many reasons but whatever it is America is one of the richest countries because they possess a lot of gold. The strength of a nation is not in how educated the members of that country are. The financial status strength of a nation is not in what is in the minerals that nation has. Either they have oil or they have minerals. Those oil and those minerals they are usually not on the floor. They are usually dug You know where they get oil? You know where they get oil? Where? Where do they get minerals? And the wealth of a nation is measured by how much barrels of oil that nation can produce. Oh, you know here in me. And that's why a nation like Congo is always in war because of the level of gold and timber that they have. They know how much they have not by seeing because they can measure and they can tell under here there's so much gold. Now follow me. When we talk about anointing for wealth, we are talking about something very deep. Because for you to have wealth, there is a lot that has to come away your way. Now 6060 say, give us don't give King James please give me any other version NLT New King James or message. I'm not a King James preacher kindly. Get any other version for me. But if there's no other we will read that one. No. Give me New King James. You don't have New King James? Okay, which one is this? NLT. Okay, read NLT but you get us also take us back to King James because what I want is in New King James. Uh-huh. New King James is saying You have caused men to ride over our heads. You have allowed people to sit on our head. We went through fire and through water. Uh-huh. 
But you brought us out to reach fulfillment. Fulfillment. Now, now give me King James original, then we read this new living. The reason I leave different version is to get different original dimensions. Original says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Now you have allowed men to ride over us. We went through fire and through water. We went through fire and through water. But you have brought us out into a wealthy place. Then when after we have gone through all that, you brought us out into a wealthy place. Meaning out of, you brought us out of fire, out of water, and then you did not take us back to where we were. From that fire, from that water, you pushed us into a wealthy place. Now, what, 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 what is NLT saying now? Give us back New Living Translation. Give us New Living Translation. NLV, N N N N N NLT. NLT. Uh huh. You sent troops to ride across our broken bodies. Uh huh. We went through fire and flood. Uh huh. But you brought us to a place of great abundance. Place of great abundance. Somebody shout wealthy place. Oh, shout wealthy place. Wealthy place. I can't hear you. Shout wealthy place. Wealthy place. Now, you need to know anointing is dynamic. Anointing is dynamic. When we talk about being anointed, we are not talking about one particular way. We are talking about diverse. To be an anointing in itself is dynamic. And you need to also know that God anoint us for different assignments. So we have different types of anointings for different assignments. And not everybody is anointed for the same reason. So we have different types of anointings, different types of assignments, and different types of reasons why we are anointed. And that's why we anoint people not once. Because somebody can ask, but if anointing is that powerful, then I think once I'm anointed, I don't need to be anointed again. Because of different reasons, different assignments, different types, there must be different anointing. Now follow me. <clears throat> Last time I told David he was anointed three times. The first time before his family and his brother. The second time before the elders of Israel. The third time he was anointed before everybody. One man, different types of anointing by the same prophet. Because he had different assignments to do. Number one, he was anointed as a king, as a leader. And God wanted to entrust the throne upon his lineage. Are you following me? After Saul messed, the Bible say God's intention was to make sure that Saul and his generation rule forever. But one day, something happened. Somebody say, say something happened. Say something happened. Saul want to go to war. And Saul has been waiting to hear from the Lord. Should I go to this war? Should I not go and fight? And the Bible said, the Lord did not speak by Urim or by Thurim. And Saul realized God is not talking. And I'm supposed to attack, I'm supposed to fight. But the God who is supposed to direct me whether to fight or not is quiet. So he calls a prophet to say what the Lord is saying. Even the prophet is saying the Lord has not yet spoken. And he has a decision to make. And many of us are here. Are you following? Some serious decisions to make. The Lord has not spoken. So the Bible says Saul chose to inquire from a witch. Oh, I will talk to you. Are you following what I'm saying here? God has not spoken. God used to speak by two dimensions. So he has inquired of the prophet. Has God spoken by Urim? He said no. What about Urim? He said no. Have you received the word of revelation? No. But I have enemies to attack. What do I do? He said we must wait. Now Saul felt God is delaying. Like many of us have felt God has delayed. Let me talk like I feel it. And so he devised a method of helping himself out. So he went to a, 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 a Dibia and told him, please bring the spirit and the soul of Samuel. But adventure, he will tell us what the Lord is saying. Resurrect a dead man. And the Bible says for sure. 
the man brought the spirit of a dead man, and the man, dead man spoke. And he said, "You are why are you disturbing me?" Sometimes when God is not talking, even the devil will not talk. You, you didn't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Sometimes when God has refused to talk, even the devil will not talk. When they brought out the spirit of the dead, the dead said, why are you disturbing me? Meaning to say, if God has not spoken, I can't speak. What God has not said, I will not say. I don't have jurisdiction. I don't have the potency. That I don't have the power to say what God has refused to talk. And now because of that, now God got angry. And Saul suffered the spirit of impatience. And this is why a throne that was supposed to be established upon him was taken out of him. Number one, the impatience was seen, was seen when God delayed talking. Number two, impatience was seen when a prophet delayed to come and offer sacrifice. Are you following what I'm saying? So when a prophet took long, what did he do? He offered sacrifice by himself. Now the Lord told him, because you are too impatient, I can't work with people like you. Initially in my spirit, I wanted to establish the throne in your family forever. But because of your impatience, I've taken it out of your house. I've appointed your neighbor, David, a man that is better than you. I will anoint him the king. Now I tell the prophet, go to the house of Jesse. Now this is how he lost his throne. Many of us, we have lost what God said is ours because of impatience. The man that you thought the Lord said will stand by you left you. And because that man did not marry you and marry somebody else, you thought God was not on your side. And you decided, if God will not help me in time, I will help myself. And the Lord said, I had a better plan for you. Because of what you have done, even what I wanted to do, I've taken it away. And I've, I've wired my spirit because I know God will call me. That it doesn't matter who is on my back, on my side or in front. Once God has confirmed I'm around, I'll keep my peace. Are you feeling what I'm saying here? With God, we are the majority. Any time wealth must enter into your house, into your life, there must be a water. There must be a fire. He say you allowed us that other people will ride over our head. God allowed it. We are not hearing again. He said you caused men, meaning you allowed them. You orchestrated it. You made it happen. You allowed it. And when you saw fire, you allowed us to go through it. When you saw the flood, you allowed us to go it because you knew you would take us out. But not back to where we came from, but into a wealthy place. Let me show you something. If you are not ready to go through something, you are not ready to touch money. Well, listen to me. People kill children to get money. You, I, I don't know if I'm talking to anybody here. People sacrifice their parents and their sibling to get money. You think you will get wealth by just shouting fire? Hey, I will teach. I will talk to some people here. There are people who sell their body parts to make money. There are women who sell their wombs, men that sell their, their spermatosia and their parts and make sure that they cannot impregnate a woman to make money. People give heavy sacrifices to make wealth. When you come to church, we are not willing to do anything to make money. We are just willing to shout, my father, my father, my father, my, that one you cannot measure with the blood of somebody's daughter. This side is not serious. Some fire and some water you must go through. So that Meshach and Abednego said, sir, we know the God we serve. There is one side of him that he can deliver us from the fire. But we also know there is another side of him that he can allow us to go to the fire. But one thing you must know is that we are not going to bow and change our minds. Because your target is to change our mind from worshipping him. Now we will worship him in fire. We will worship him outside fire. The thing is, we are not changing our mind. Because we know he is able to do. But he may not be willing to do it now. So 
So they say, we will enter that fire. Where is it? Is it this side or this side? He says, seven times is even less. Make sure that that fire is not seven. If there's another number, you can make it. And trust you me, they know God. This man that we are talking knows how God can behave. They went to fight with the Babylonians. Their God was on their side. Come here, let me use you for example. Stand here by my back. You come. I want to show you something. This is my enemy. These are the Babylonians. Are you following what I'm saying? This is God. And the Bible says, when God is on our side, who can be against us? Are we in agreement? So we are sure with God on our side, victory is on our but though God was on their side, the Babylonians still fought and won. And they lost the battle and became slaves in the hands of the Babylonians. Though God was with them. Number two, God was on their side. When they entered the land of the Babylonians, they were castrated and made eunuchs. They were not born eunuchs. They were made and there was, there was no medicine to be injected that would kill pain. It was done in a manner that every pain was supposed to be felt because there were slaves. Imagine <laughs> Let me talk like I feel this. If a normal circumcision will make a mature man to walk as if he's, he's sick, and no more circumcision. What about being castrated? I want to show you the weight of what they went through. It was as hot as fire. But they still not, did not lose hope. They were denied from worshipping their God. Taken through everything. But they still had space to believe in him. Because there was a greater testimony that was awaiting. Daniel was pushed to the den of lions when he sat down. He started fellowshiping with the lions. Can I tell you something? If Daniel did not go to the den of lions, today it would not be a testimony. Now that's why you can easily worship the God of. But do you know what it was when he was in the den of lions? After before in Gizon and Bona Pelequa, do you know what it was? Shadrach, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do you know how hard it was for them to accept to go to the fire? Today we are busy celebrating the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Elijah, the God of Elijah that answered by fire, Elijah that ran away from a woman. Do you know how Jezebel was dangerous? Elijah told God one day, kill me. No, you are not hearing me again. Christianity is not for babies. That's why I told you last week, you communicate wisdom to the matured. Because there are things I tell you today, you do you don't sing pastor. See that for a few minutes. He allowed men to ride over us, number one. Number two, he allowed us to go through fire, number three. He allowed us to go through waters. He knew at the end, he will take us to a wealthy place. God shall take you to a wealthy place. I said God is taking you to a wealthy place. I said God is taking you to a wealthy place. Now why do we have different anointing services? It's because we have different types of anointing and we have different assignments and also we have different yokes to break. Isaiah 10, 27. He said, and by the reason of anointing all, every yoke shall be. So there are yokes, yes, already broken. There are yokes yet to be broken. Samson was anointed to fight. Jesus was anointed to preach the good gospel to the poor. Isaiah 61. He said, well, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Samson was anointed to fight. Jesus anointed to preach. You can be anointed to do business. You can be anointed to lead. You can be an anointed counselor. When you give somebody advice or counsel, it works. Are you listening to me?
If Samson could be anointed to fight physically, I believe God can anoint you to do business. Oh yeah. I believe God can anoint you to prosper in your work, in your career, in your job, in whatever you are doing. If Samson could be anointed to fight physically, bila kwenda kwa gym, bila kufanya karate, or anointing to akwa na military training, na kitu yote akipata angeua nayo. Juo ya punda hii. Ana kuna dua riving gang kwa ngwa. Mimi it was not in that bone. There was some supernatural force. I believe angenua tu mkono hivi. People are just dying without even him touching them. Are you following what I say? Because practically, how can you kill a man with a sword? Now maybe I'm a fopa. Now I'm going to go to Moja. Can't you see there was a supernatural force? Akifaja tu hivi wa tukunu wa meenda. Anointing. Shout anointing. Oh, I don't like the way you are responding. Shout anointing. Hey, shout anointing. So for you to be wealthy by the anointing of God, you must go through something. And you must stay there and conquer and come out strong. The kingdom discipline, follow me, the kingdom discipline says you must go through it. I preach a message and I say you have to go through it. Look at your neighbor and tell them you have to go through it. For a child to be born healthy and perfect in health, that child is required to stay in the womb at least eight or nine months. Correctly. Are you following? Any child that is born before the seventh month, the eighth or the ninth month, naturally, they are born with problems. And as I talk, you are Toto yote amezaliwa kabla ya wakati tunaitanga hiyo aje premature many christians want premature growth you just started speaking in tongues you want to open a church uliwaambia tu mtu mmoja akapona aoma you are calling yourself an apostle a prophet what have you gone through how many stars do you have because every star represents a scar can't talk like a fillet how many stars do you have? And what have you gone through? Because running a church is not making people fall down. Tumeangusha watu. Listen to me. So because Jesus told them, when we prayed, sir, demons obeyed us. That should not be your concern. What should make you happy is that your name is written. So Jesus learned that you were ended in Come out! Demons who are manifesting. This is what I say. I will mislead them. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because many of us follow God because of how many things He has done. But we need to follow Him for who He is. Not for how many demons we have cast. Follow Him for who? Sit down. Now, when you are anointed for wealth, write these things down. When you are anointed for wealth, don't allow things around you to take your joy away. When you are anointed for wealth, don't allow things around you to take the joy of the Lord from you. By the help of God, I've learned to serve God when I have money, when I don't have. And I've learned to serve God when I have friends, when I don't have. I have learned to preach when the church is full and when the church is not. I have learned to do everything I do when people are celebrating me, when people are gossiping. I have learned not because of the doings, because of who he is. Now when God has anointed you, the happenings should not interfere with your faith. Because 
happiness comes as a result of the happenings. But the joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So it can be, your happiness can be taken, but don't allow your joy of the Lord to be taken. Can I tell you something? Every general in the kingdom, whether in the music industry, the preaching industry, the prophetic industry, the evangelistic industry, any man or the woman of God that has made some waves in the spirit has a painful story to tell. When a man was needed to kill so um, uh, Goliath, David came and said, Sir, I have a story to tell. For adventure, if I tell you my story, you will allow me to kill this man. And David said, Is Goli Goliath is not the first battle I'm going to fight. In my father's, when I was taking care of my father's flock, a day, a lion and a bear came. And without anything in my hand, I tore them and killed them barehanded. This Goliath will not be an exemption. David drew strength because he has killed a lion before. I asked you last time, how many lions have you killed? Because the house rent lion, you did not kill. School fee lion, you have not been able to kill. The lion of bad marriage and divorce, you have not been able to kill. The lion of friends leaving you, and deserting you, you are not able to kill. A lion of lacking food, you have not been able to kill. Any lion that has come your way, they have been killing you. And you know how it happens? This marriage did not work. You have refused to wait to hear God. You have quickly picked an option. So you can soothe your spirit and be at peace. Because you can't stand the fact that that woman, that man, said no. At times, you have to stay there and win. Sometimes you lack food, you change it into fasting. The judge is not happy again. It is food that you are lacking, but you have changed it to what? Fasting. You are saying, God, all things work together for... I believe maybe if there is what you are saying in the spirit that I'm not picking, let me align myself very quickly for these two days as I'm waiting. It will save you calling people anyhow. One day your brother will ask you if you are handed over in his hands. You will ask your brother for money one day. Hey. Hey. Are you following me? So when you realize that something is not happening, you say all things work together for one day you don't have fear to go to church. Say I'll walk. On your way as you're walking, don't allow your mind to think. Begin to speak in tongues. You say if I walk for 30 minutes and speak in tongues for 30 minutes, ask yourself for how long have you been able to speak in tongues without being in church when you are alone for all that time? When last did you speak in tongues for one hour? But when you are going to a job, you don't have you don't have fear. You will walk and go to work. Are we together? But when you don't have fear to church, you don't go. You must say, I'll go for the next 40 minutes. So when you start, you say, I have, a, I have devised a method of going. So you are just going. Before you get to church, you have spoken in church for more than 40 minutes. Ask yourself, when last did you pray for 40 minutes in tongues alone? Shout wealth. Sit down. You know you are wearing yellow and yellow is prophetic. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Those who are students of the prophetic. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? When you are anointed for wealth, don't allow things around you to affect the joy of the Lord. You know, 
Si munielewe na mine waelewe. Are you following what I'm saying here? When you are anointed for wealth, be careful how you talk about money. What you say about money. Because money is a spirit. Though you are anointed, but if you talk carelessly, money may not come your way. Matthew 12 verse 36. 12 of 36 of Matthew. If you talk carelessly about money and giving and receiving, keep it for me, I'll take it later. Because when you may find even Nikuru, I feel too if I go be buy. Keep it for me. I fully want to say. When you are anointed to make it in life in the area of finance and wealth, be careful what you say. If you, I told you, there is power in the tongue. There are things you say today they will catch up with you, with you some years from now. Any word that you say goes into your spiritual world and it creates something in the spirit. And I tell you this, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Hold it there. Any word you speak which is an idle word, carelessly, you will give account. You will give what? Account. You will give what? Account. So if you are anointed for ministry, be careful how you talk about ministry work. If you are anointed about singing, be careful how you talk about singing ministry. If you are anointed as a prophet, be careful what you say about what? Prophets. If you are anointed for wealth, be careful what you say about money. May the Redeemer of the Lord say so. May the poor say I'm rich. May the sick say I'm healed. May the weak say I'm strong. Are we together here? If you are called into the healing ministry, deliverance ministry, you need to know how you talk about sickness. How are you? Ah, the Lord is my strength. Oh, shout out here. The Lord is what? Okay, if the Lord is not your strength, what is your strength? Is it not the Lord? When you talk carelessly, the Bible says you will be held accountable of every idle word. Here America wana jifanya. Kweni wakona nini? Edu kenda ku apply visa wana jifanya. Mara razi mulipe. Mara upewe interview. Mara vaji nini siikai. Are you following me? Now you will have said it many years. Now Kasahao. One day you want to apply for visa. Those words you said are still active over your family, over your head. So you are applying for American visa. They deny you two, three times. You begin to scatter demons. The demons are also saying we are surprised. You are inviting us in your matter. Can I surprise you? The spiritual realm is like social media. Oh, let me teach you something. It doesn't forget. Ushao na mtu ameapply kazi after many years anatolewa kitu ali post kwa social media many years ago wanamwambia is it not you that said this company is very useless. We mwenyewe ulishasa au pako namwambia let me confirm. Is it are you sure I'm the one who said bro unaona anasema ni ukweli alafu anaanza kueleza you know those days he said that one does not hold. So interview naisha wanakuambia we will talk to you later. They will never talk to you. The realms of the spirit is like social media. It doesn't forget. You talk careless today. Ten years from today, it will wait for you. And that's why sometimes it's good you repent of things you have said that you can remember and those that you cannot remember because they will catch up with you somehow. Follow me here. When you are anointed for wealth to make money, to be the Joseph of your family, you are, you, are, you are carrying some Joseph of Arimathea anointing. A rich man that will remove shame from the body of Christ. You must be careful with your words. 
Because what you say here or do will be held used against you. Not in the court of law. On the judgment day. A day when an angel is bargaining and say put this in her hand. And an angel will stand on your right hand. And say look at his garment is filthy. The high priest was standing before the Lord. And, an, and the angel of the darkness stood on his right hand. And opposed him. God give me this job. An enemy is saying, he said, he better die if he has to do this. Is he yet dead? No. You who spoke, you have forgotten. Now you are killing God. God, my joblessness. God is saying, but I blessed you, but the opposer came and challenged this. Shout mercy. Shout mercy. Sit down. When you are anointed, carry the mind that God rewards the work. When anointed, carry the mind that God rewards the work. Mark chapter 10 verse 21. God does not reward you because you are anointed. It is what you do after being anointed that will provoke the reward. Yes, I'm anointed, but what am I doing with my anointing? Then he arose from there and came to the region of Judea by the other side of the Jordan. Uh -huh. And the people gathered and the people gathered to him again. And as he was accustomed, he taught them again. The Pharisees came and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Mm -hmm. Testing him. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said to them, The question they were asking to test him. Uh -huh. What did Moses command you? They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce uh -huh. and to put her away. Okay. And Jesus answered and said to them, uh -huh. Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Uh -huh. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Mm. I continue. Continue. Then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together... I need Mark 10, 21. Because I'm, I'm, I'm asking Mark, myself, where Mark, are, you, are you reading from Mark? Mark or 10, verse 1. 21. I'm sorry. Ah. Before we join people here to marry in Jesus' name. Then Jesus, then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, uh -huh. One thing you lack. One thing you lack. Go your way. Sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. Now this was the hardest thing. This is what I was looking for. A man came to Jesus and told Jesus, I have done everything. I have made money. What do I do? Jesus said, there is one thing left. Take it from there now. Jesus told him, you have made money, you have done everything, but there is one thing. You have treasures here. But you don't have treasures in heaven. I will show you something. Jesus looked at the man. He said, you have everything here, sir. But there's one place you are going after here. You have not put treasures there. And the best way to help you is after investing here, make sure you have known how to also prepare for your tomorrow. And then Jesus told him, go and sell everything. Invest in the lives of the poor. Put in the work of God. You will have invested in heaven. And then go and take your cross and follow me. Which does verse 20? Continue. 21. Uh-huh. 22 it says. Uh-huh. But he was sad at this word. When he had investing in the kingdom, he got angry. And went away grieved. And he went away grieved. What happened to him after doing that? For he had great possession. He was so rich. That telling him to put that riches in the work of God or in the life of the less privileged, he felt yes to attack or manipulate. That gospel that Jesus preached that day sounded as manipulation. He walked away angry. 23. What happened? Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, Oh, Jesus said that to them. 
how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples, disciples were astonished at his words. Uh -huh. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus explained the parable. You know when we read this scripture, we don't get there. It is hard for a rich man to enter compared to the, uh, an, a camel going through the needle and we leave it there. Jesus said a rich man that trusts in his riches is the one that may not make heaven. But a rich man that is wealthy but believes in Jehovah will make heaven. Now the other side of it, if it is hard for a rich man to make heaven, how far much more hard is it for a poor man? And this is why today we are going to fight this spirit of poverty. Some people have believed God, they, they can never be rich. I can see a gospel, you can a person, and I tell you a gospel of prosperity. And if there is a gospel of prosperity, there must be a gospel of poverty. There cannot be a man without a woman. Am I saying the truth? We can't have a hen without a heifer. Is this so? Another a cock or what? Cockerel or those things. Uh, hey, whatever you must have possible and so if there is a gospel of prosperity there is a gospel of what now which one do you choose now which one of the two do you choose because gospel is good and is given free but preaching it is expensive just having this church here every Sunday is costing a lot of money we are not here because we speak in tongues we are here because we paid the landlord. Oh, you, are, you, you see this power we are using? Kenya power does not know we are serving God. Kenya power gives us power because we are paying. Don't pay this month. See if they will give you next month because you speak in tongues. Jesus told them the problem is not the rich man. The problem is when the rich man trusts in his riches. That is when it becomes hard for one to make it through heaven. So meaning if a rich man is rich but believes in God, that man going to heaven will become easier. I will show you something. Do you know why? There are many things that doesn't make him bitter that makes you bitter as a poor man. And bitterness is one of the reasons why we cannot serve God faithfully. God, how can I serve you? I don't have food. And you want me to pray. I don't have strength to pray. You're already arguing. A rich man does not have that problem. Because there is plenty of food. So if he's fasting, he's fasting because he obeys God. Not because he lacks food. You, you can easily fast like I was saying. Because there was no food. Now you change it into fasting. Now which one is better? When there is food in the fridge and you choose not to eat it, you are fasting. But when you are praying because there was no food, you are hunger striking. When you see one phone call from school, you are morale is not going that's why he says sometimes when you're in church, eh, avoid your phone. Just avoid your phone. Because you're trying to go and live when a landlord and say, "I'm going to phone you." Now, when I come back, I'm going to Hey, what you say? We're not going to phone you. We're And I don't know why my caretaker, we're not going to phone you. I'm going to kill 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 you. So that you don't open. I'm going to kill you. When you see a message, your landlord, I'm locking the door. Even your tanks, you are praying in tanks. Go para da da da. God, what is this? <laughs> Am I talking here? A rich man does not have that problem. The problem is, God, may I not trust in my wealth so that I miss heaven. May I not misbehave because I have money? Because I want to make heaven. You, you have already misbehaved. 
I told you last time I post on Facebook, poverty will make you do what you don't want. I'm telling you. Sit down. Somebody shout, I shall not be poor. I can't hear you. Shout, I shall not be poor. I shall be rich and wealthy. In the name of Jesus. What is it to be rich? I shall see wealth. You are talking about being rich and you You are renting and you are saying you are rich. Are you, do you know what riches are? A rich man does not rent. If you are renting a house, you are paying 70,000. So you are have jagara. Hey. Rich people, people rent their houses. You are renting somebody's house. You are saying you are rich. You don't know riches. You want to buy comprehensive insurance on a lipa in parts. You are paying three, four times. And when we are talking about wealthy people, you also stand up. You are bargaining 4%. No, 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 that is too much. You are driving a car with third party insurance. You are saying you are rich. <laughs> you have a phone here in copper. You can be in church, but they are angry. We are praying Kaparato Sete. Unakumaka sijalipa simu. Okay, Angalia is freezing. They, 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 I don't like the way they behave. They will not take the phone, but they will take the use of the phone. So we can call you, but you cannot do anything. Until you pay, you do nothing about it. May God deliver you. You did not shout a man, I will suspect you. May God deliver you. You see that amen. You cannot do anything. I say, may God deliver you. Amen. Some of us are going to go to the house and we are going to go to the house. We are going to go to the house. Really? What level of poverty? Shot fire! Ah! You are going to go to the house. You are going to go to the house. You are going to go to the house. You are Shika hii miatatu. Niweke yu kiatu wa ukam for it. After three, four days, na kupige hii kiatu itaenda. Unautumia miambili. And then when you finish paying it, now you come out. And you want everybody to see your shoe. By the help of God. Some of us, God has helped us. Fire! God must bless us in a way. That we don't beg, we don't bargain. When we go, we take. When we want, we buy. What we like, we possess. Shout, I receive it. Shout, I receive it. Listen. I told God yesterday, I got angry. I was going to, to do my hair. So because my house is not far from the barber shop, I decided to walk. So as I was walking, I pick something in the spirit. Nika peta mali kuna ba. Nika pata ubas misma mabo mingi. Nika sema easy ubas na target clients. Nika sema God, you must give me a charge that on Sunday kuna parking itaja siyo kwa sabu ya washirika etu wamekuja na magari. Yani paka watu uba watakuwa na sema ile kanisa na siwezi kosa mshirika mwenye ataka uba wajani parking itu wapo niketegea. So there are many cars back on Sema. You can even watch the Kawengi or Kanamagari. Zengene ni uba wana tegea because a charge has become a business hub. Are you following what I'm saying here? There are those who have their cars and there are those who are just coming to. When I was doing church in Embakazi, that's what's going to happen very soon. Before we left Embakazi, businesses were coming to that landlord because of the charge. The day they had Shalom is moving, everybody packed out. That's what God told me is going to do here. When we enter a place, we, we take over. Every witch, every wizard, I'm doing something this Saturday, all pastors around will be coming here. And that's what I'm doing spiritually. It's costing me money, but I know what it takes. I will not say it here. Listen to me. I'm dangerously wise. I may look young, but, but I'm a wizard in wisdom. <laughs> When you want to take a land, you must send people to possess to check the land. 
When they come up with the report, you must check the reports. When I sent people to do evangelism, some told me, Papa, people are happy. Others told me, some people are saying they will kill you because you are tormenting them. Those were reports that were coming from the people that went to, post, to check the land. Evangelism. Reports were coming. Some witches are saying they will kill you. Some people are saying you, they love you. Those were reports. Then I sat down with the true information. I choose what to do with it. If we don't get out of this area soon, we will be a territorial force. If you want to talk about churches in Nolongo, you cannot count the two or three before. Even Catholic will not be mentioned. Because the way God is going to heal the sick and prophecies and the deliverance and miracle, you will not be able to ignore. You know there is an impact that you cannot do without. Upendi your pastor lakini lazima umtaje. That's where we are going. Because of a high level of anointing that God has released here. Sit down for a few minutes. Let me show you something. So when you are anointed, you need to carry with you, with you understanding that God does not reward you because you are anointed. God rewards you because of the work that you are doing. It is the work that brings reward. Put it down. It is the work you are doing for the kingdom or in your life that brings what? Reward. It rewards the work. Anointing empowers you to do it. In other words, it's anointing that empowers you to receive the wealth. Do you know we have many ordained pastors, but they don't have a church? Now listen to me. Do you know we have many pastors ordained with certificate? Now I'm in a theological school. Now where is the pastor Kanisa? Are you aware? Do you know we have many lawyers who are trained lawyers, but they're not practicing? Now let me talk to you. Do you know we have many doctors who are fully trained, but they're not practicing? Do you know we have many teachers who are trained, but they're not teaching? So anointing is like school. It gives you the necessary knowledge and empowerment you have. But the fact that you have gone through school, does it mean you, you, you qualify to be wealthy? It is what you do with what you learned in school that makes you wealthy. You can go through the school of law, study law, everything, but you are not practicing. Is that true? But you have the knowledge of law. Back up on a first, you can present somebody. Is this so? But if you don't represent people by that, do you make money out of it? If you're a doctor, you don't treat, do you make money? If you're anointed and you don't do anything with anointing, does it bless you? So you carry the title of anointing. I'm anointed. I'm what? Everywhere you go, people must say, my, my learned brother. But you don't stand in courts. You don't, you don't argue cases. When you don't argue for anybody, any case, no money. If you are anointed, and your anointing cannot bring solution to people's issues. That anointing will not bring a reward. It is what you do with anointing that will place a demand on the anointing. Oh, God help me here. It is what you do with your papers that place a demand on your papers. So a company will say, we want to hire you. There is a demand. Because before, you had, and listen to me, you must gain experience. That's what I've realized, even in the realm of the spirit. I did know that companies operate by spiritual law. Hey, Jesus, help me here. There is no company will employ you because you're educated. They will ask you for what? Uh, you're not here. They ask you for what? Working what? Experience. Even in the kingdom of God. You can be a pastor, have many members. You don't have experience. You can't stand test of time. And that's why I told you there is what we call the curriculum vitae in the realms of the spirit. How many Goliaths have you killed? How many lions and bears have you teared down? So when men are talking, they can invite you. The Bible says when Jesus was going through hard times and the men were needed to come and console him, Elisha and Joshua were not invited. It was Elijah and Moses that were called. 
But Joshua did miracles that even Moses did not do. Am I saying the truth? Elijah did miracles that even Elijah did not do. It's not about how many miracles you perform. It's the realm, in the realm of the spirit, how many ranks do you possess? Are you a one-star general? Or three-star? Four-star or five-star? And that's why I can go to a family and pray for a family where there is a witchcraft. I will come home, my children will not die. I will not, I will not vomit blood. You go and try, you come back, you vomit blood, your children will be dying. Are you anyone saying here? That's why I said, from the last mission, I went to pray for somebody in their home. And they turned my sacrifice and abused me. I said, I'm not going to pray for anybody in their home. Unless otherwise. Because I'm putting my life in the line. Against your village altars. And then when I come, you are saying, ah, no, let me stay here. God did not call me to go to people's houses to remove charms. I was called to serve where? Here. At least let me not go and, and, and make myself stupid. Let me stay around my jurisdiction. Sit down. So when you are anointed for wealth, it's what you do with the anointing that matters. Are you together here? It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter who anoints you. It's what you do with the anointing that matters. Then consistency. Consistency. Keep doing it. Keep Keep doing it. Can you build this building in one day? Or can you build this house in one day? Can you build it in one week? Even in one month? It must take what? Time. Whether you have money ready with you, there is a structural time that you need to take for this house to be well built. So after kamu kuna raka aje, kuna siku lazi muongeze, ndio nyumbi kauke, ndio wendele. You must say the truth. Naturally and spiritually, there are, there, are, there are things you must go through whether you don't like it or not. So adjust quickly and go through it. The church is not happy again. Oh, the church is not happy again. Can you build this house in one week? One month? Why? Because if you hurry like that, it will come down, isn't it? So it is required of you, even if you had enough money to build it. You understand what I'm saying? Imagine the truth. Spiritually, there are things that cannot happen in your life now. Because you are not uja kauka ya kutosha kumeba yomzi wengine. You don't have capacity. That's the word. So there are things you must go through to build capacity. But while you are going through it, it's not sweet. Last time, when Samson was dealing with the lion, do you think it's a joke? All alone, he was going to visit a girlfriend. Are you following me? Yes, that's what the Bible is saying. On his way, he met a lion. Alone. Uh, he also said, I'm Samson, I'm anointed to do this. He did not say in Jesus' name or in the name of the Lord who anointed me. He held it with his hands and tore his mouth about. There are things you must do in the realms of the physical and conquer for the realm of the spirit to open for you. Sometimes it is scary. Sometimes you feel like it's killing you. Sometimes you feel it's, it's in a kumaliza. But when you stand it and win it, now, tomorrow you have a story to tell. Listen to me. There are things, if we did not lose our tent in Siokimao and go through what we went through in Siokimao, it could have not been a testimony today. But when we were losing it, was it sweet? Was it an easy experience? But is it not a testimony now? When it becomes to a personal going through, we don't look at it that way. Look at your neighbor, tell them you had to go through it. Oh, you are not talking to your neighbor. This side you are letting me down. Shout, you had to go through it. 
So it is one thing to be anointed. Sit down. It's another thing to receive from the anointing. So when we anoint you with oil, it's like God himself is the one anointing you through the hand of a human being. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. So there will be an anointing is like a school that you are going. Are we together? It is, it is prophesied over your life. Look at me before you read. Look at me before you read. There is a prophecy over your life that one day you shall travel abroad and you have international grace. Are we together? Now, you can never go abroad and have that international grace if you don't even have a language to communicate abroad. Am I communicating? So you will need to go to school and even know how to talk to people who are not from your community so that when the day of going that abroad comes, you have a language to communicate when you go abroad. So in school is just to empower you so that when you go there, you can do what God has in store for your life. It is not the school that gives you. Schools empower you. So anointing prepares you for what God has said. But when you put your step out to do it, now you are already empowered. So I say when we anoint you, it's like God himself, the one anointing through the hand of man. First, Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Holy there. <laughs> he who establishes us and anoints us is who? So who is anointing you today? But through the hand of a servant. Anytime you talk about establishment, you talk about God. But anytime you talk about prosperity, you talk about a prophet. He that establishes us and anoints us is who? Continue. Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul. Ah. Sorry, I skipped Check verse it. 22. Uh -huh. Who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a deposit. Leave it there. That's what I wanted. So when God anoints us, he gives us a heart. He gives us a spirit. Are we together? That builds and strengthens us. So when we anoint you with the oil, actually it is the Lord God anointing you through the hand of man. When God wanted to make Saul a king, God did not come down from heaven to make him. He sent a man. When God wanted to make David a king, he did not come down to make him. He sent a man. When God wants to anoint you for wealth, he will not come to anoint you. He will send me. Shut I here. 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 So when you are anointed, protect your anointing. Let anything happen. Let everything leave you. But don't allow your anointing to be interfered with. Protect it. Guard it. Because it's the anointing that brings things. It's the anointing that restores things that have been lost. Protect the anointing. How do you protect the anointing? Sometime. Close your ears. One of the ways to protect the anointing is doing what? By closing your ears. There are things people will tell you that will kill your faith and your spirit. In Pam, Am I talking the truth? So how do you best protect it? Guard your ears. Because ears are gates that the devil will use to access your heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Somebody will tell you something that will, will, will ne negate your faith. One statement that will turn your heart even against God. So how do you protect it? Close your ears. 
I have refused by, by reason. Deliberately. That there are things I will not listen to. A man of God came to me some years when we were in, in Siokimao and said he has been told there is a man that can give you charms to bring people to church. So, kawaida, ndiyo mutu afanyagi kitu, lazima kuna mutu amemskuma. Ama memu advise, ama memu ambia. Are you following? Ndiyo hata mutu akunywe, lazima kuna mutu alikuambia, ah, onjako. Am I saying the truth? Ndiyo hata mutu apate mwanamuke, apate ujashiri, ya kutoa nguwa abaki uchi, asimame kwa street, itanajiuza mwili. Lazima kuna mwanamuke mwingine, mwenyalesha apeleko na mwanamuke mwingine. Am I saying the truth? So when I listened, I said, that thing sounds good. But I know how I was called. I was never to help God's work. I was to allow God to work. Are you following what I say? So I refused. So because of refusing, you know, we cannot remain friends. Because I already know the secret. Are you following? So we became enemies. And the man went and did whatever he did. After three months, the church was packed. But one of his pastors died. Found dead, seated. So he thought it's a normal thing. Went and prepared and buried the man. Because there's money, there's crowd, there's everybody. On the burial, one that was also coming, got accident, died. So when they are leaving this one, when they go back, they are raising man to bury this one. He began to suspect, but he said, maybe, maybe. Are you following what I'm saying here? In one month, he buried four members. One month. Meaning they were dying every week. After three months, he buried around ten people. Now he now knows the problem. Now when he go back to the people who helped him to do those things, they told him that's the only way to sustain that number. The more people you want, the more people must die. Then I said, let me preach to some empty seats. And let me have every of my members safe. Until when God wants them to be full, it will be full. I don't have stress of burying people. I told you so lost his throne because of impatience. Many people consult with witchcraft because of impatience. And that's why he consult a wizard and a witch because of impatience. He felt God was delaying. Many of us, you think God has delayed, so you are thinking otherwise. I came to advise you. Behave well. Touch your neighbor, tell them, begin to behave well. Before you do what you will regret. Hey, you are not talking. Tell them, behave well. Oh. Before you do what you will regret. Because listen, regret does not come when you act. Regret will come as a repercussion of an act. Sometime back later. Be careful. And that's why I come in the name of the Lord to anoint you to make money the genuine way. A godly way. A money that does not come with sorrow. I want crowd that I preach like I preach every day. I don't, need to, I don't need to shape how I preach. Because somebody gave me some instructions, so I'm looking for how to preach. Let me do it the way I do it. Because God is inside. But if one witch from Tanga is inside, you will change how you preach. And it is it's by choice, because if you misbehave, your head will go for it. Your head will go. Benefits of having anointing. Number one, sit down. What are the benefits of being anointed? Oh, my time is up. I will take that from next time. Rise up on your feet. We will start from there on Friday. We spoke about discipline, isn't it? So we will start from there on Friday. Benefits of this dimension of anointing. I was still doing introduction. I have not started preaching. But I just realized my time is up. See, we had agreed. Yes. We are preaching for generations. 